change your mind, change your money, change your life. I am Coach Rob Lee Simmons, the host of this podcast, and let me be your tour guide to greatness. If I was doing any better, I would be you. Welcome to the Greatness Academy podcast. I am here with my man, MJ Mott. He is a real estate investor. He is an entrepreneur and he's a project manager. Uh, so we're going to talk uh, real estate today, man. How you doing, my man? Welcome to the show. I'm glad I was finally able to catch you, even on the move, even on the move. <laughs> no, like I said before, man, hey, I have, I fully plan to be sitting behind my desk, little background up, looking cool, like I'm, you know, a uh, small and debonair CEO of some company. But no, right. this is the reality of being a project manager, dog. Okay. I'm, I'm closing windows. I love Driving it. Driving around closing windows because it. it rains. <laughs> so so tell me a little bit of like uh the the day in life of a project manager i know everything is different day to day but what can you expect out of a, your daily uh your daily grind so my days are kind of based on my schedule and uh what jobs i got that's going on at the, you know at the current time and um i like to give myself a couple of days between jobs because i still got to do you know sales and marketing i got to go visit folks shake hands and you know get babies and stuff right but for the most part um, depending on what jobs I got coming up, I'm up, you know, probably 530 because I got my guys need to be on site around 730. Make sure that they get to work and then I'm off to, next, you know, check the next job. And, um, you know, it's just depending on the job, you know, I got, I got a little list of checklist things that I should be checking. But to tell you the truth, I'm not no uh, carpenter, you right. know, um, I'm just familiar with the code book. And uh, the thing, I don't really need to be a carpenter. I just need to know what they need to be doing. Exactly. And, uh, so I spend most of my day just checking behind people, making sure they're doing the right stuff. Um, if I estimate it right, I would have the right material. But a lot of times, you know, there's some stuff you don't see. So uh, I got to go pick up a lot of materials. Though. That's why I got this old raggedy truck, you know, <laughs> right. go pick up material, you know. But yeah, that's the majority of my day. So how did you how did you get into uh, project management? And then what was your transition? What did it look like coming from the military into this world? Well, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you a surprise, surprise. I spent about five years locked up after I got out of the military. Mm. And um, coming into this was by necessity. I actually started out of real estate. Um, I was wholesaling real estate. Nice. And then I moved on after I saw that what them guys were doing. Like, man, I think I could probably accomplish that. No problem. Um, but I started thinking about how to get into that portion of it. it required me to become a contractor. And so I started doing some handyman jobs here and there and uh, mixing that in with real estate. Um, basically just offer my services. Like, hey, if I'm coming to buy your property, something wrong with it, hey, I'll patch it up. We're gonna make sure we get it sold. Mm -hmm. And uh, that turned into a full blown business. And uh, I started flipping properties with the money I made off of that. And uh, from flipping, kind of got into uh, new construction, which is a whole new level of headaches. Uh, but like I said, it, it kind of one thing led to another. And I just stayed on that same stair rail going up the same stairs, I would say. Yeah. It's another problem I have all the time. See this shit? Yeah. <laughs> I never, know, never know what key go to what. <laughs> now, I should have them labeled because we did that in the military all the time. We labeled right. every key. Right. No, don't do it. <laughs> I, I like to stand here for five, ten minutes trying to figure out what key going what door. Is it like the guess? That reminds me of my father, man. My father would have a thousand keys because he had eight cars and 46 doors and every time we went he went to the front of his house he would always have these giant keys and we'd be sitting there for like five minutes before every time like never fails that he just i'm like dad it's been 20 years just put the damn h on the key <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, that would make sense that would make sense but somehow i always find myself busy doing other things besides the things that would make my life easier right right uh, but that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's just in the busyness of it though so mm -hmm. what are some what are some uh key skills and qualities um that you say would say would be essential um to do what you do like what are some of the like maybe top five mm -hmm. things that you've learned that hey this is a necessity for me to have this skill to be successful at what i do i would say uh being a leader man uh just being able to make decisions and strategize when everybody else around you is kind of just you know they saying what they're gonna do you really got to get out there and actually do it and, and don't be scared to fail because mm -hmm. uh every project i get on it's a series of failures until we get to the end and i believe your your ability 
to get through that is training. You know, uh, the entire time you're being trained to make better decisions on your next project. And so you just got to kind of get in there and do it. Be humble. Uh, learn where you can. YouTube University taught me a lot. You know, <laughs> Propelio Academy uh, is another great resource for people trying to be real estate investors. That's a free plug right there. Yeah, it's completely free. And uh, that's uh, like an entire education on the beginnings and kind of advanced real estate investing. Uh, I took it like a college course. Nice. Mm -hmm. So so what do you feel like is probably uh, the best asset that you have uh, that makes you succeed in what you do? The best asset I have. Uh, I think the ability just to move through most crowds and like I'm not I don't get shy I'm, I'm kind of an introvert but i'm not shy when i need something done i'm just straightforward i come in there, hey i need to get this done i don't know how to do it can you help me you know yeah, yeah. i mean i'm just legit with it all you know yeah I'm, just stay humble you know because a lot of people been doing a lot of this work 30 40 years carpenters been doing this for a very long time but they never can get the business side of it right and uh so i study that i, I do study that religiously uh at least uh, the regulations involved with what i'm doing and i, I see that that helps out a lot too so let me ask you, like, what are some of the biggest uh, challenges of the uh, the career field? Like, what like what are some of the biggest challenges that you face, like, on a daily basis? Dealing with people that aren't professional, mm -hmm. um, and by professional, I'm not saying how they act, but how they conduct their business. Because um, you got several people that say, "I got anybody can come out here and build me a deck," but it's not a whole lot of people I can come to and I say, "Hey, give me a bid." bidding on that deck i need the labor and materials separated and uh i also want to know how much you're charging for management and what the approximate cost would be can you put that all on paper and get it to me by tomorrow you know right so that that doesn't occur that's why a lot of these people haven't gone on further in their business because they don't handle that side of it but me coming to them and saying hey this is what i need and so i kind of train the people that i deal with to do that and it makes my life a lot easier and it makes them a lot more money right right i think that's uh like the biggest whole in business and entrepreneurship is the uh, the uh, the ability to provide timeliness in your service, right? Mm -hmm. um, and be able to project, hey, how long something is going to take, what time are we going to meet, to be on time for the meeting, I think is really the difference between um, boom or bust in a business is simply oh, yeah. managing your time. Uh uh, when, when they say time is money, literally, in real estate, time is always money. I'm sitting right now paying, I'm going to drive by the duplex we just finished, too. Right. Paying about $1,800 a month on a property that don't have nothing in it. It's, mm. it's completely finished property. No tenants in it yet. And so it just costing me to sit there. Yeah. And uh, the longer I took to build it, and the longer it took for the city to give me my certificate of occupancy, I was paying money, literally. Right. So yeah, you get stuck in, in situations like that. But, you know, I had to actually fire one of my general contractors just because the guy, he, he was not being observant of the schedule. You know, because if he don't get his work done, there's other people that come behind him that needed him to be done, that now we got to back them up. It just causes a complete mess. Right. And, you know, so you got to be real tight with the time, even to the point of firing somebody, you know, that you may want to work with. So what I want, you to do is tell me the story of your worst project nightmare <laughs> oh man uh that's a long story actually <laughs> i want to hear it we got time this was, uh, this was when i initially started all this stuff i was still just wholesaling and i got in one deal it was a five property deal you know um uh, all of them bad back taxes uh you know the back taxes was kind of more than the value of them at that time Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, really the only way for me to get in here, I got to do some creative financing. Uh, the contract was nuts. I had the people basically guarantee that I could buy these properties at the value of the tax um, if I paid for one cash, you know. Right. And so I did that. And then uh, the, one of the properties was in decent shape. Well, when I say decent shape, meaning that most of it was still standing up, you know. Right. Uh, gutted it and flipped it. And I had to deal with one of my other contractors. He goes, I'm pay you half now, pay the other half when it's done. Total 30 G. The end value should have been 80 something. Going through this process, we figured out that the land under that property did not belong to the person that sold me the property. The land. You know, now this wasn't no mobile home either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was a house 
had been sitting there for at least since the sixties. Uh, the situation was that that property was owned by the same person, and they end up having their house built in their backyard, and it was on an adjacent street, so it had a different address. Right. And they just put a fence up, and they say, okay, this is your yard, this is your yard. Nobody cares. You know, the guy that owned the other property was like, man, I've been wondering why my taxes has been so high all this time. It's like, because you're paying for this full lot, you know? And so um, that could have been a very costly problem if I wouldn't have just went to him and be like, hey, man, I'm just do a free survey. I'm going to survey yours, too. And uh, I just need you to go ahead and sign off that I can partition this where the fence is at. Right. No problem. We sat there. We ate it. Ate at the barbecue spot. <laughs> we signed all the paperwork. We was in and out, man. No problem. Yeah, that's um, beautiful. <laughs> that, that's not the end of the story, though. <laughs> oh, Lord. Not beautiful. Uh-oh. Yeah, it, <laughs> no, it, it gets better. <laughs> okay. So we got to the end of the flip. And I'm trying to go ahead and uh, put a mortgage on this property. I was going to keep it for a rental. The property was worth about, I don't know, uh, about 95000 mm. And uh, I only needed about fifty to get in there, and make my money back, make my 20 g and be on my way and uh, get rent after that. Uh, but I found out the hard way that, you know what, uh, companies don't like to give little mortgages. You know, mm. they say, uh, you only need 50 that's too small. Like, it, it doesn't meet the right parameters for FHA. We won't really make no money on it. They're not gonna get behind it. Right. And so I'm saying that like that makes no sense. Like I got, I got had, I had decent credit at the time, and uh, y'all won't give me a mortgage, and I because I don't want to get the full mortgage. You know, I don't want to put 95 on it if I don't have to. Right. You know. Uh, so I ended up selling the property. Um. So it was a whole issue with title and the taxes and all that. I had to learn a lot about title. That was just a big nightmare. All ended out well. We sold it, but uh, I learned a lot. That was a uh, a university and being a project manager and a real estate investor. No, that's 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 super dope, right? Because I heard a lot of nuggets in there that really transitions businesses, and I think the biggest one is um, in your ability to negotiate, providing value, right? Because you went to Buddy House and was like, "Hey, look, I do all the work. You know, I slice it right here. We we'll go sit mm-hmm. down, eat, and all I need you to do is sign this paper." Right, so I good. had to sell them the value, sell them the value on that free, um, uh, getting the, getting it appraised, not appraised, um, uh, the survey, evaluated for yeah, the survey, there you go, yeah, the word. Mm-hmm. yeah, and that's big though, because not only did he save money, uh, in that survey, he also saved on his taxes because his taxes went down because now he's not paying for that full land of property, so that was a lot of value provided, but it's also value to you, so sometimes you got to give up something to get something that that was that was oh, pretty yeah. dope. He could have easily say like, "Hey man, you know, that's land. You got to buy it, man. Let me get about eight G's for that, you know." Right. And it wouldn't have been a bad, you know, because that's about how much it was worth. Right. But uh, you know, it didn't come up in the conversation, and I wasn't about to insert that idea. I got you. I know it. <laughs> I know it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so let's talk about uh, kind of the uh, the conception of your business. So, like financially, uh, how much did it cost you to kind of get into uh, the market. Okay, so there's people that say that you can do this without money, and it's possible. Uh, wholesaling and all that, it's just hard as hell, man. You gotta mm. do a lot of marketing, like old school marketing. Even then, that, that costs money. You gotta go buy posters and stuff, put all that stuff up, make a lot of calls. Um, it's gonna cost you time or money. Mm. Um, and if you got money, it's a lot easier. But at that time, I didn't have a lot of uh, money. I only had about 30 G's to start my whole company off with. I actually uh, dissolved my uh, IRA and uh, took that hit and, you know, uh, bought a lot of things to, to get rolling uh, and, to, and to do that first flip. Right. Um, but, yeah, that, that's it, man. I would say uh, it, it costs a good little penny to get in the flip, man. You got to have about 20 G's and the credit score of around at least 620. And they want to see that you have experience doing it. So that's kind of the problem that, that get a lot of people jacked up is they don't have the experience. And so a lot of times you need to uh, do a JV, a joint venture with somebody else that's doing it already. They got that experience to take them in for that experience part. Right. And you can do that with any portion of it. Like uh, the credit, if you got bad credit, partner up with somebody that got good credit. You ain't got no money, but you got plenty of time. Partner up with somebody that got a lot of money and don't have a lot of time. You know, it, it's finding those people that, that can fit in that puzzle where you need them to, to uh, get the end goal. Yeah, and that kind of leads into my next question. Like, how do you approach um, networking and building relationships in the in the in the industry? 
man, do good work, tell the truth, be honest with people, help people. I mean, it's because it's, I'm not no marketing expert. I'm just, I try to be real, you know. Right. If, uh, if I got a deal and I'm telling, hey, it's a good deal, they're going to believe me because I'm the kind of person I say, I told you so. I work right. with a guy, you know, I work with a couple of guys, investors, and I tell them, hey, that's a good deal, man. You need to buy that one. You know, I don't want that. I want to look for a unicorn or whatever, right? They don't buy it. I sent it to somebody else. Damn good deal. They made shit ton of money. Oh, man, why you did? I told you so. <laughs> I mean, next, next time when I come tell you, you know, listen to what I got to say, man, you know. Uh, but, yeah, that's it, man. Uh, just, just be real. Be honest. Don't try to get on here and pretend you grant card home when you like me. Like, no, I, I got a few properties. I'm doing a little bit here and there. But I'm, I'm driving around closing windows. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, this is my job. Do you ever, um, in the future, look to like outsource some of the work that you're doing now? Like, uh, kind of yeah. continues like move, be more hands off, or, or is this one of the parts yeah. of the job you enjoy? That's that's the ultimate goal. Really, I only want to deal with the, the uh, part where I go in and close the deal. Mm. And I, I'm not even a great salesman. I just like talking to people, and I like looking at architecture. You know, mm. I kind of like visualizing that portion where you just go see the house and uh, you see it in its current state and you kind of just sit there and think on it a little while, live with it for a little bit and imagine what it can be, mm. you know, and then the rest of that is just is execution. If you can make that dream come to this world through, you know, the process. Uh, but I still want to stick with that. Um, but as far as all this other stuff, yeah, I definitely have a property manager, somebody driving around closing windows so I wouldn't have to be bothered <laughs> you, you you would love that yeah some people just enjoy what they do some people that 15 20 minute inconvenient ride is like you know uh, an oasis for them but uh you said that ain't that ain't you 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 getting it done man because there's other things I could be doing right now that can make me a lot more money oh for sure for sure what are some of the common pitfalls that um, happen in real estate or uh, that you see often with other entrepreneurs and, or like, what was, what would you tell them to avoid in, in this particular uh, career? Man, the, uh, the waters are full of sharks in real estate. I ain't gonna lie to you. A lot of these gurus going around here, charge people 20, 30 G's to uh, do what they can do for free. You know, um, it, it's, it's hard. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. To, to how to say what specific ones to avoid, but getting too anxious and trying to do something too fast, you got to take your time and really get to know what you're doing. You know, if you're gonna fail, do it small. You know, don't don't blow your wad. You know, <laughs> at the beginning. That's you know? good. That's really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Just take your time. Uh, cause yeah, my whole idea was getting in and start building apartments and all that. I haven't done apartments yet. Um, just do some uh, you know, small multifamily whatever. But I'm taking my time, and um, I'm treating this as this as if this is college for me. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting paid to go, right. you know. Uh, but I'm always learning, man. Just take your time. Get with somebody that done it before you. Because uh, you don't have to, you know, sit here and figure all this stuff out. Uh, it has been done before. And if it was successful for somebody else, it should work for you if the market conditions are the same. Oh, that's good. So, so let me ask you. Um, everybody has their markets and their trends in the markets. Um, what are some trending things that are developing in uh, real estate or what are some trends that you're riding right now um, in project management in real estate? Uh, so, yeah, I, the trends right now I see is that uh, interest rates should be coming down again, I believe. Uh, prices are kind of easing back a little bit. Uh, they still up there. So it's still cool if you're trying to flip. Uh, it's not so bad of a time to do so. Uh, it's just harder for people to get mortgages. So you got to kind of look at what you're flipping and who you, you know, what your target demographic is that's going to buy it. Can they afford it? Uh, and I ain't going to lie, like most of my target demographic is normally these hood properties. You know, it's going to be a lower middle class. And uh, I think that uh, this affects them a lot harder as far as getting uh, getting the, the, the proper mortgage or whatever for that. To, to be able to purchase the property. Right. But uh, as far as trends, let me see what else we got going on right now. Like I say, I'm hyper local. So in this location, it's a soft gentrification going on. We got a lot of new homes being built, and they're not, uh, I say a soft gentrification because they're not displacing people. 
so we building properties out here that are affordable, but they just knew, you know. Um, and so you're making a, the area look better, but you're not pushing people out, you know, not pushing up the tax bracket too high to where, you know, people can't afford, you know, they already own a property, can't afford to stay there. Right. Um, so that's a trend that I'm noticing here in my location, which, you know, Southeast Texas. Uh, but overall, I think, yeah, interest rates are, are just kind of, they kind of drive what's going on with it. When So when um, I believe your, your interest rates gets too high, I kind of switch my gears and go away from flipping, get more into contracting. Because, uh, you know, people need to get work done regardless. Uh, try to go for the, the people that are earning steady money, mm -hmm. uh, companies that uh, commercial properties and stuff like that. You know, it don't affect them that much. They still got to get stuff done as part of they, they process. They, they can't deal with deferred maintenance. So I uh, kind of pander to them when this uh, kind of conditions exist. Mm, that's good. That's mm -hmm. good. I think that that again just kind of goes back to being able to, regardless of what the market looks like, to provide some value because at the end of the day, you're gonna make some money as long as you're able to provide some value. And even if it ain't if it ain't money up front, right? Over time it, it it'll develop into to some money because everybody gonna be like, Hey, I know somebody that's gonna do a good job. Yeah. So let me that ask is it, man. Yeah, let me ask you this. Where do you see yourself um, in five years? Optimistically, uh, I'm trying to build an ecosystem down here. And I know this is me dreaming big, but I, I really want to recreate kind of like the Black Wall Street down here. Um, starting with trade classes, uh, having a school and uh, having that school build on itself, uh, possibly linking up with somebody trying to get a, a, a credit union started, you know, to help mm -hmm. us fund this thing. I, I hate to ask people stuff. You know, I'd rather just go ahead and do it myself. Right. Uh, so making the right connections with those people and maybe, uh, you know, doing something like that. That's five years. I'm giving myself a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Me and my wife just had the conversation yesterday and, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, and I, you know, me, I, you're, you're not going to get much from me until you see it. So I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you, I'm going to tell you where we at though. So we started having this conversation about uh, building ecosystems and <laughs> I was just looking at, you know, really how to develop it and then what are some of the main sources that are needed. And uh, I mean, everything starts with land I, and, I, and I'll probably leave it there, but everything starts with land. So you can find a good plot of land or something that's, that's built uh, mm -hmm. and Close to the water, you you gonna be on to something. Okay, yeah, and, yeah. Man, as long as you got a water source, the uh, sky's the limit. Oh, you talking about going off the grid, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's something I'm. <laughs> I, I, man, I've been. That's a dream of mine since uh, damn, it had been like at least 2003. I started thinking about that, uh, going off the grid and, and and doing my own thing. But uh, it seems like right now I need to build a much bigger stash of capital. Before I try to get off into that, it's unless I want to take forever to do it, you know, it's gonna take a lot of capital. Yeah, for sure. And 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 I would tell you this though, right? So just kind of like part of you know my profession as a financial professional, like a lot of times I I do uh, estate planning by you know starting backwards, right? So what does that number look like for you? Like what could I really realistically do uh, with X amount of dollars per year, and then look at um, that number to say with with x amount of dollars a year what's the projection of how long i'm going to live right so does that look like 30 years 40 years so can i live off a hundred thousand dollars every year for 40 years boom now once i understand that now i can start doing math and then i can start moving and investing the way i want to because now i have a plan so i, I would definitely say yeah you can you can have a stash of cash but you would be mind blown to do the math first and then know what your goal is so i'll tell you mine right so i've been working off uh this uh this concept of being able to support yourself off of 20 percent of what you earn and save the other 80 percent that way you can retire in six years why because if you do the math of 80 percent of what you saved up over six years means that you can live off of that money for 30 years, right? So if you find your number, 
right? Now you know what you, and now you just, if that number is, you know, it's like for me, it is $100,000. I can, with my big ass family, I can live off $100,000 a year. Therefore, um, my goal is to make a half a million dollars a year for six years, and then I can retire, right? Okay. Yeah. So like that, that. Like yeah, that. just, yeah, once you find your number, sky's the limit, brother. Make the plan after that, huh? Yep, that's it. You can take it after that, and then you can start yeah, looking yeah. at bigger projects. You can start focusing on smaller projects. But that that made me realize, hey, uh, it's time to focus on some bigger projects because where I'm at ain't a half a million. And so, no. uh, yeah, so I'm, a, I'm, I, I know how to get there, right? So, but mm -hmm. really, it's just all about, um attacking uh my goals because i i don't want to be a dreamer i don't want to be a dreamer man that's my biggest thing oh yeah yeah and i, I got a restlessness I, I feel about uh you know the way things are going like i i definitely want to get uh get that done and um for the longest i mean you know i was in financial uh management back in the day when i was in the military too i used to get those briefings the debt uh briefings you know we can come in and can't pay the debt whatever we got to Teach them how to budget, whatever. And uh, you'd be surprised how many people they making decent money and they just not keep, you know. Right. Right. And, uh, right. and that's that's the problem. You actually put a number to it, the eighty twenty. Like that makes sense. You know, if you live about twenty percent. And I think I'm kind of doing it, but like I live like a spark. You know, like right. I said, I, no AC in my truck. You know, <laughs> like I got a, hey, I got dollars. They got other people's names on it, so I can't spend it. You know? Right. So, right. But yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then that's what that's the thing, man. That like the 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 footprint or yeah the blueprint is already there right you already know how because that that is project management hey i gotta take this pot of money you know i gotta split it i can't even really keep all of it i can eat decently right but now you know i gotta build more i gotta build more to make more right but once you start to figure out what that number is then you start to really understand yes and no in the projects that you start to take on because hey this is going to get me closer um, you know, this one, if I got to put more money into this, is going to take me farther away from my number. Yeah, so, uh, no, I believe it, man. So let me ask you this, though, like in going through everything that uh, you've done in the in your personal life and your career, what was the uh, biggest amount of money that you spent at one time? And how did that make you feel? Uh, you know what? It was a property, actually. Uh... And uh, it wasn't a whole, I bought it for 20 G. And just mm. the fact that I could whip out a check for 20 G, man, like, I, you know, I felt like a big ball. You know? yeah. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. But at that point in time, even to this point in time, with my own cash, yeah. that's the, the largest yeah. I ever made. Yeah, that's dope, man. I think uh, the biggest thing about these, like, cash purchases is, um, you know, and hearing some of these amounts, you and then i mean i i mean this is really recent for me like the last three or four years i start realizing what's a lot of money and then um uh, and then also started realizing that i've been undervalued for so long and so yeah. and being able to make that purchase and, and understand uh hell if i can do this how uh, i can do 200 right oh yeah if i can do this i can do two million so it's just it's just a, a different dynamic of you know really um, doing it big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doing it yeah, big. It touched on, it touched on the fact about you know spending money to make money. You know? yeah. And um, yeah. and that's that's kind of where I put the, the majority of my money is in even if it's a long term thing, it's long term down the road, it's something that you know I may not be able to recoup my money back in a year or so. It's it's a plan. You know that this is going to pay out eventually. It's going to pay out a lot more than I'm putting into. For sure, and I think that's just one of those things that goes with your plan, right? Like you can plant plant a seed that may kick out your number in six years. You be like, hey, this is going to take five, six years to develop, but it's going to put me right at X, and that is definitely something worth investing into. Um, I love it though, man. Hey, MJ, thanks for joining the show i really appreciate it man thank you for riding us around let us know what it looked like <laughs> to uh yeah. be a pj man project manager um I, I definitely wish you the best in your business and thanks for joining us brother so man appreciate it appreciate you having me on here man uh tell the fam i said what's up well we'll do we'll do and on the show we say that winners win 
And we win when you win, and we want to thank you for being a winner, brother. For sure, man. For sure. Thank you. All right. And we're out. Boom. Thank you for joining the podcast. And remember, change your mind, change your money, change your life. We out.